Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Triple N Media. I am Dr. Nick Nickham, a cardiologist from Houston, Texas. Welcome to Cardiology Seminars. We have more than 300 presentations starting from basic science all the way up to 2022 ACCHA guidelines. We strongly encourage you to watch those. The feature presentation is going to be on myocardial segmental ischemia based on the coronary anatomy and the location of the ischemia and it is going to be determined by these uh, segments which are going to be the same ones which are going to be used in echocardiography, nuclear cardiology, PET scans, CT of the chest and MRAs. So once we understand the basic concepts of these segments, there are 17 segments and once we understand these 17 segments as uh, what regions they represent, what arteries they are supplied by, it will be much easier for us to determine the degree and the extent of the coronary stenosis in a given patient. So let us try to learn as much as we can in this basic important topic of myocardial segment and coronary anatomy relationships. Before I go any further, I would like to tell you I have created a cardiology rotation manual which is good for nurses, students, fellows, and primary care doctors and cardiologists in practice which has a, a ton of information about all the things that you need to know about the clinical medical practice. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to tell you how you can get a copy of this book for free. So let us begin with the feature presentation. This is the only slide I have, but this slide covers a ton of information. So let us begin with the basics. As you know, the heart is supplied by two coronary arteries, the left main dividing into the left anterior descending and the circumflex branch. The left anterior descending artery, which is represented here in red, supplies the anterior wall of the left ventricle and the anteroseptal region of the left ventricle. So let's keep things simplified and to the point. The circumflex artery is represented by the yellow color, which is giving rise to the marginal branches, which supply the anterolateral and the, and the infralateral wall of the left ventricle. When we are talking about the, the segment, which is called as the target view or the bull's eye view, whatever you want to call it, this is like compressing the heart from the apex all the way to the base into one flat segment and thus going all the way from the tip of the heart to the base of the heart. As we can see, this is the tip of the heart and this is the base of the heart. The whole thing is sort of pancaked and that's what we are seeing as a bullseye of the target view. And it's the same thing in case of uh, echocardiography, in case of uh, nuclear imaging. PET scans, CT scans, and MRA. So let us understand this fundamental concept. So we have the left anterior descending supplying the anterior wall and the septum. On the other hand, we have the right coronary artery, which supplies the right ventricular branches, and also the posterior descending, which supplies predominantly the inferior wall and the inferoseptal region of the left ventricle. So we already covered three major branches, namely the left anterior descending artery, which supplies the anteroseptal region, the circumflex branch, which supplies the anterolateral and the infralateral walls, whereas the right coronary artery supplies the infraseptal and inferior wall. And there's a posterior wall, which we can see here, which is going to be supplied in 85% of the cases by the circumflex marginal branches, and in a, in a small percentage of uh, patients, uh, it will be supplied by the posterolateral branch of the right coronary artery. So that is as far as the pancake segment is concerned. As you can see, it has 17 segments. And now when we slice this heart into four major segments, starting from the base, here we have the basal segment, we, here we have the mid segment, then here we have the apical segment, and this is the apical cap. The apical cap is 17. The base segments starts here. One and two are the anterior wall of the left ventricle. This is the anteroseptal. 
this is the inferior wall whereas uh, here we have the circumflex branch supplying the anterolateral region of the ventricle. So even though the orientation of the ventricle is not perfectly aligned with the anatomical planes, as you can see, the anteroseptal region are sort of twisted towards the left, and the infraseptal sort of becomes more unlike what's shown here. Anyway, so this is in the, the cross section of the heart. So we are talking about the cross section of the heart at the basal level and in the mid level we have the same anatomy and when we go to the apex we just have one segment of the apical anterior wall this is the septum this is the inferior wall and this is the lateral wall and these are all depicted in different views so this is as far as the short axis is concerned but we use more than just short axis we use four chamber view especially in echocardiography and in pet scan in nuclear scan in nuclear scans and also in ct and mra and there we can see we also see the right ventricular wall here and of course this is supplied by the the septum which is supplied by the this is the infraseptal supplied by infraseptal supplied by the right coronary artery and this is the the anterior wall and here we have the circumflex trunk so if you are studying for echocardiography board it is exceedingly important to know these segments because uh, they are fond of asking questions putting an image like this and say what does 4 10 and 15 represent and if you look at here, it is representing the inferior wall, and this is representing the anterior wall in an apical two-chamber view. So the beam is going straight from the anterior to the posterior wall, and that's how it is. Whereas in a four-chamber view, you're going through the lateral wall and the septum, or the infraseptal region. So those things become exceedingly important in understanding the anatomy of the location of the wall motion abnormality and to what coronary artery of its branches does it represent. By looking at these things, we can also determine the presence of a myocardial scar by echo or by nuclear or by CT MRA. We can also look at the extent of the myocardium, whether it's involving 5%, 10%, or 15 30%. And we can also see their wall motion. Is it normal? Is it hypokinetic? Is it hyperkinetic? Or is it uh, uh, paradoxical? Along with that, we can also look at the left ventricular cavity size, which tells us about the left ventricular size and function. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a very quick synapsis of uh, correlating the various myocardial segments uh, with the coronary anatomy, then determining the extent of the myocardial ischemia, the location of the myocardial ischemia, the potential, the possible artery that is causing this problem, the overall function of the heart, the overall heart size and ejection fraction. Thank you so much for watching this presentation and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, before I go any further, I'll tell you, you can get a free copy of my cardiology rotation manual by sending me an email to drnicknickum at gmail.com and I will see you in the next presentation. Thank you so much.